this episode of Wrecked. A garbage truck flips over in the rain. It smells like And O'Hare has to clean up the stinky mess. Pretty gross, a lot of maggots. You know, you don't want to be underneath one of those any longer than you have to. Service truck operator Julio wrecks three trucks and now his job is on the line. I'm not proud of what it did. And a pickup truck gets stuck on an active railroad track. And the race is on to get it free before the train comes barreling through. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare towing with his wife Marcy, his brother Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. An early morning thunderstorm sets in over Chicago, turning traffic into a gridlocked mess. As soon as it starts raining, everyone forgets how to drive. The rain sucks. Wet roads are the cause of one out of every five accidents. And for Bill Graziana, owner of O'Hare Towing, those are his kind of odds. The weather is beautiful if you're in the towing business. It's absolutely lovely. Nothing good's happened yet, though. The day's young. Something will happen here real quick. It doesn't take long till Bill hits the jackpot. The rain has caused a fully loaded garbage truck to lose traction on a highway off-ramp. When the truck had overturned, it was obviously, in my opinion, was going too fast for the ramp and it was a little wet. Yeah, pile that corner up. They actually spun around and went the opposite way of traffic. Police have closed down two of the highway's three lanes. Ultimately, the key is get it up and get the hell out of there as fast as you can, because the less time you spend on the side of the road, the better off you are. But rain is making this tow twice as hard and a lot more dangerous. Hey, Jameson! Communication amongst the crews hard. Jameson! You can't hear, you can't see. There's issues with having your big steel iron booms up in the air and you're in a lightning storm. You could end up with a problem. The weather isn't the only unpleasant part of this tow. It smells like There's another thing with garbage trucks, and, 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 and we call it garbage juice. Stink truck. It's pretty gross, a lot of maggots. Then you add the rain to it, so it's something that, you know, you don't want to be underneath one of those any longer than you have to. This is going to come down in my underwear. It can be stuck up in my ass all day. My boxers are soaked. My inner shirt's soaked. Stinks. For some reason, my raincoat is at my house. It never ceases to amaze me when my guys come out and they don't have the gear that they're supposed to have. It, it gives me a little bit of uh, poetic justice when they're soaking wet and their underwear is wet and their socks are wet. I, I really get a kick out of that. You're fine. Let's go. Bill and his team have no idea how much the truck weighs, so they take extra care when rigging up their boom and winch lines. Block on top and a block on the side. I got a nice lip right here. Keep the block. No, that's gonna crush. Put it in there. Now put a block in there and a block on top. You need to run the control. truck is upright. I say that's pretty good. But the front half is still stuck in the mud. It's time for Trike to try to winch it out. Pull on a little bit. Let's see what happens. See if you can slide it. Once it was up, then we repositioned Mike's truck to bring the nose around and up out of the mud so he could hook up to it. Go ahead, Mike. Just make sure you don't pin it on any wood. Watch the wood. It's got to roll back a little bit. I was a little worried about that incline with the garbage truck going down. Okay. Finally, the truck is ready to be hooked up for towing.
It, all the garbage stayed in it, thank God. All the maggots stayed in it. We didn't have to worry about all that crap, beer bottles or anything like that. But I got garbage juices all up on my boots and up around my thighs due to the ditch. It's nasty. <laughs> Coming up, three service trucks are down, and a driver might lose his job. The ultimate consequence is for me to decide that I can no longer use the guy in the organization. And the rain isn't the only thing causing trouble today. I'm going to take the amps, too. You had a problem with that? Today, O'Hare Towing performs a lot of recoveries, but not all of them are massive wrecks. Sometimes a customer just needs a jump start or a flat tire change. And that's where the service trucks come in. Service trucks are sent out to help with roadside problems, but they aren't equipped to do any actual towing. Julio Cruz is one of O'Hare's full-time service truck operators. Julio is a fella that I originally hired to help me cleaning the shop. I was told he was just a good kid, and he needed a break. OK, I'll check it out. When he first started, he didn't have a driver's license. I financed him enough to get the license. And when he got that, he started doing some pickup truck parts delivery, running errands. Julio has got a reputation as one of O'Hare's friendliest employees. That's what did it. <laughs> what if my wife was out there on the road, stranded, you know, with a flat tire? I would like it if the person giving that service is as friendly to her as I am. I have never had a guy working with me that has had so many customers call back, send tips, letters of how happy and efficient and nice person he was to deal with. You know, you can't train somebody to do that. You have a good day. OK, thank and you. take care of the little monsters. ones. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. But Julio wants to be more than just a service truck operator. I asked Bill if I can become a tow truck driver. It means I can be a bigger asset towards the company on top of a raise, which is good. And I can uh, do more than just a service guy. But this morning, while out in the rain on a service call, Julio had an accident. And damaged not one, but three of O'Hare's light duty trucks. I wouldn't have to worry about that. Like a genius move. We had this service truck that was on the side of the road on 290, and I was having a hard time. So Bobby Wartino went over there to give him a hand. And Julio was like, hey, I'm driving by. I'll give him a hand. And doing about 45 miles per hour, wrecked into all three of them. Eradicated 75% of my fleet. I'm not proud of what I did, actually. That was pretty dangerous, what I did. And I'm going to go up there to change, take some deep breaths, and have a cup of coffee. And then I got to hear exactly what happened. And I'm going to have to be sitting. I'm glad nobody was hurt. Fortunate for that. It could have been horrific, because the guys were out walking around when the, when the trucks collided. What happened? I drove a plane right into 294, you're going about 55 miles per hour. How long does it take you to stop? A football field. 100 yards. At this point right here, I want you stopping back here. I was in the third lane. So you came all the way over from here? That's a dangerous move. Anytime. Snow, water, ice, dry. I got to evaluate this. Hey, drive slow. People have accidents. We take care of it. We're not supposed to be the ones getting into the accidents. Ultimately, you know, the expense of fixing the trucks is going to come out of my wallet, and I try to spread my pain with a fellow that's involved, so he'll have to step up a little bit. People have accidents. We go clean that up. The ultimate consequence is for me to decide that I can no longer use the guy in the organization. We have accidents with our units, then you're a dumbass. I'm a dumbass. the early afternoon, and the rain continues to fall in Chicago. Light duty operator Chris Villages has just started his shift. They gave me an accident right off the bat. There's a minor two-car collision a few miles away at the intersection of York and Crestview. When it first starts raining, the oil on the road's good, a little slick, so um, there's a lot of accidents. 
Chris has been with the company. He just celebrated his 11th anniversary here. He is the senior driver for our light duty flatbed fleet. 422, I got a, two vehicles, but it looks like I'm only getting one. You're on your way to school? Do you need a ride? No, that's my uh, first Hey, you all right? Yeah. What happened? Just lost control a little bit? When their vehicle breaks down, the only thing they got on their mind is their vehicle. Do I keep it? Do I get rid of it? Do I fix it? You got to get their mind off their vehicle. Dude, now you have to do laps. Yeah. <laughs> Chris quickly gets the damaged car up onto his flatbed. Then he cleans up some remaining debris from the crash and heads back to O'Hare with the car in tow. But as soon as he unloads the sedan, he gets another call. I was just informed that we got another accident. So we gotta get out of here again. O'Hare's flatbed drivers are always in high demand. The fleet of vehicles O'Hare owns and operates is huge and varied, but the flatbeds are the busiest of all of O'Hare's trucks. I think we've got about 30 of them, and they're the most useful truck we have. Quite frankly, we would be out of business without our flatbeds. Also known as carriers or rollbacks, these flatbed trucks are useful in a variety of situations. There's something that we can put pretty much anything on as far as cars and boats and whatever we get. Two cars at one time instead of sending two trucks. You can load one on the bed and tow one on the back. Whether we're hauling construction equipment or miscellaneous freight or whatever needs to be hauled, if it fits on the bed, it's going. Flatbeds can do more tows in a single day than any other truck, and Bill likes to keep them running 24-7. Reality is, is the flatbeds are paying for the bigger trucks day in and day out because they're just so much more productive. Our motto back in the day was big trucks, big money. Well, now flatbeds are the lifeblood of O'Hare Towing Service. OK, I was just informed by the officer to pull into the parking lot. And with the second car of the day loaded on his flatbed, Chris Villages is as busy as ever. We're on our way back to the main shop to unload this vehicle. Hopefully, I can take a little bit of a breather. Coming up, the pressure is on for Julio to prove he's not just a screw-up. He needs to pass this to make sure he seals his position here at O'Hare Truck Service. And later, a pickup truck is stuck in the middle of some train tracks, and it's up to O'Hare to rip it out. It's a little after 4 o'clock, and the rain continues in Chicago. For drivers of O'Hare Towing, it makes for a very busy day. Veteran driver Chris Villages has already responded to two calls and now starts his third with a car already on the back of his flatbed. 422 to base. I got the vehicles, um, major rear end. Hopefully this Kia is front wheel drive. Something's going on with that guy over there. It's a major street. We got to get this lane cleared. But we do need a flatbed to tow this Nissan because it's majorly crunched in the back. I already moved one. I just got to get my vehicle secured, just get it out of the roadway. Another O'Hare flatbed arrives to tow away the wrecked compact car, and Chris can head back to the O'Hare shop for a much needed break. So let me get out of here. Well, that's three calls within three hours. Hopefully, I can take a breather. Back at O'Hare, Julio's day isn't getting any better. Not only did he damage three service trucks this morning, but now he's taking his level one certification test here at O'Hare. I'm so excited for you, I can hardly stand it. My loins are on fire right now. So the test is comprised of uh, four different sections. Uh, it's about 25 questions a section, so it's about a 100-question test. After his accident this morning, it's make it or break it for Julio. This is a step to get into the towing world. I am a very firm believer, and I am a huge advocate of cross-training. Did you read the book? Yeah, I read this whole thing. If we have a proctor, which is a teacher that I bring in to do this, we can't administer it ourselves because it's a nationally accredited training certification, so it's a big deal. It's a big thing to coordinate. Your answer sheet is on the front page. Pull it out, begin to fill out the personal information on the front of the answer sheet. So there's quite a bit riding on the testing. 
There's raises based on it. There's status based on it. I think Julio is flat ass nervous and scared. And sometimes that's a great motivator. So I hope that's the case and I hope he does well. He needs to pass this to make sure he seals his position here at O'Hare Truck Service. His driving record isn't the smoothest. He needs to pass this test. While Julio is already feeling the tension with the test, over at O'Hare's impound yard, things are already heating up. The man arrested earlier on suspicion of DUI arrives with his wife to collect his personal items. So you're just getting property out? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Sir, somebody's gonna stay. Why? It's part of the vehicle. My ass. Uh, you're not leaving this lot with this somebody. How the f are you gonna tell me I'm not taking my cell box? Because that's part of the vehicle. Normally, um, we don't let the subs or the systems go only because we usually use that as ransom. You know, kind of like, okay, well, if you want your subs, you need to take the whole vehicle with it. I'm gonna take the amps, too. You had a problem with that? Yeah, I do. Hey, 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 that's enough. You know what, I can stop this right now. Yeah. Call the cops. Do me a favor. Yeah. This is my attorney right here. Please call the police. That's fine. Right. I'm the manager. I'm gonna okay. have you guys wait I don't care lobby. who you are. This Hi, is my stuff. Nice to meet you. All right. All right. Listen, no, my husband has, has had a hard day and he's had a temper and I'm gonna work this out. All we wanted to do was document what was in the car and take out certain items that we don't want to go to it's the auto body shop. Auto, okay. Yeah, but we don't want our speaker bags to go to the auto, sure, auto no body problem. shop. I'm an attorney. I will sign a paper oh, acknowledging sure. that I took every piece of my personal property. That's not an issue. Once tensions have subsided, the driver is able to gather all of his belongings before his SUV is towed to their body shop. Thank you. Yeah, I would have gotten up, ma'am. I, I have no doubt because his attitude, I mean, he, he wants to get in my face. And when you want to get in my face and you don't care that I'm a girl. I don't care lobby. who you are. This Hi, is my nice stuff. Yeah, he would have he gotten in the fight. I'm quite sure he would have been escorted off. Absolutely. My ass. No. He was a little mad because, you know, he had to go to jail. He found a little stuff in his car. And <laughs> yeah, you know, stuff happens. Coming up, a pickup truck gets stuck on some tracks, and the O'Hare crew has to get it out fast. And the results are in. Can Julio keep his job? The outcomes w weren't quite what I had expected. It's nighttime in Chicago, and an urgent call has just come in to O'Hare's dispatch. A drunk driver veered off the road, hit an embankment, and flew 40 feet through the air, landing in the middle of six railroad tracks. The driver and passenger were rushed to the hospital. Will and Edwin arrive on scene and are told that trains are scheduled to come through every half hour. With no time to waste, Will knows he must get the total pickup off the tracks as fast as he can. They hook the two chains together. They hook the truck up to Will's wrecker and get ready to pull it out. About to lift it up and pull it over. Got it? If you pull too hard, you can pull a cable apart, rip out the track, get it off center. The, way, or the railroad has to come in and fix it. Delays the trains even longer. This rail is too high for the switch. Yep. So all we got to do is get over the switching plate. And we'll be OK. You sure this going to work? Yeah. I'm going to stick wood under it. I'm going to go get a bunch of my wood. Because they got stuck on the, one of the tracks. So we're going to lift it up and see if we can pull it. They've been working furiously for the past 15 minutes. And with only 15 minutes left until the next train comes barreling through, they know they'll have to hustle. Switch rail. Blackwood underneath right there is possible. With mere minutes to spare, they finally get the truck free from the tracks and manhandle it out of harm's way. successfully performed. 
prevent one big wreck from turning into two huge disasters. Julio's in early this morning, awaiting news on his level one test he took a week ago. We got the, uh, the TRA certification for the uh, driver testing. The outcomes w weren't quite what I had expected and what it hoped for. I failed. I came in on my days off. I studied and I failed it by five. I got a 75 out of 100 questions. Yeah, unfortunately, the evolution of, uh, of stepping up in the, in the tow truck world is, is based on certification, based on experience, and based on what you bring to the table. And if you want to make more money and you want to move up, you gotta, you got to improve. But after wrecking three trucks and failing the driver certification test, is there any room in the O'Hare organization for Julio? I think he's a diamond in the rough as far as the towing world goes, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure he gets through it and gets by it. So for now, Julio's job is safe, and he's back out doing what he does best. Some lights will stay on and drain the battery, so I wanted to make sure you didn't need a jump start as well. But he keeps a reminder of his accident with him at all times. I'm lucky I haven't killed anybody. And that's engraved in my head, just keeps playing over and over and over, that's why I keep that. already studying for the next driver certification test. We have two to CSS 25.5. We have two to a couple different numbers. Right. And Bill is still standing by him and the other O'Hare drivers. I'm, I have the best guys in the best trucks. Period. End of story. They call me Crash. Yeah, it still hurts, though. I'm very sensitive about my, my unit, my truck. He's going to be a lot sadder when I talk to him, so it's just a bad deal. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but you never can tell. Shouldn't have happened, but it happened. I'm in my bumper.